Well, first of all, I, I want to talk about creating a culture of equitable talent development and performance management, which just seem a little bit heavy to talk about in this term where we've, we really have been having to look after ourselves and each other um, in, in what we do. But this is actually a, a tool to be able to do, to be able to do so. And the, the performance management and talent development are two things in the new school. I've, we've, we've flipped on our head, really. Uh, in, in, in an approach, we were very much, um, it's a new school started in September. It was very much a target driven, data driven set of targets and staff were disaffected with that. And, and actually the, 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 there was a need for development in there. So we flipped that and just talked development. Of course, when we can't look at what we do with that, that will be underpinned by the outcomes of students and, and everything else. But we, we flipped what we did there. And um, with the uh, process we put in place and, and part of the speech I spoke to people and this is the visual I'm looking at at the moment to imagine now you've got a solid floor in the school the solid floor is basically staff being on board with the value and culture uh, and the, the the vision within school of what we're aiming to do and that is looking after ourselves first making sure we look after other people and so we make the biggest difference for the students you've heard me say before also within that it's also looking after our own development and, and really owning our own development as well and growth as, as a professional within school. So that's the first element of a solid floor. The second one is impact at your career stage expectation. So you're an NQT, you're coming in, you're on board with the value and vision uh, and the ethos of the school. You have an impact in classroom as you, you, you'd want to at that stage. You're ready then to start looking and developing and growing further beyond that. Likewise, you could be a, a head of department, a head of year, an assistant head teacher, a deputy head teacher, whoever you are, once that floor is solid, you're then able, as I say, to, to, to really own your CPD, to bespoke it much more and to act a level above your pay spine to try out some other things. I want to imagine a ladder going up from there now, uh, which I'm, I'm going to take you through in a second. The, um, the, 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 the formula I used to think of uh, when I was a young teacher and it worked well for me was hard work plus talent equals success. And for me, that worked and my career went like that. And, and it's really only as I've, I've, I've worked in, in headship that I've seen a difference, or in deputyship and headship, I've seen the difference that there's a missing part in that formula I explained. It's actually when hard work and talent meets opportunity that you become successful. And, and mm. part of the I've been explicit with that in staff and in our school around the equality of opportunity and talked about gender pay gaps, talked about the underrepresentation of, say, BAME within headship, et cetera. We've talked explicitly openly, me talking as that uh, old, white, uh, heterosexual male, um, uh, able-bodied male, uh, from my perspective, and, and the privileges that's bring brought rather. So talking about underrepresentation and, and actually creating opportunities specifically for people to be able to opt into. And within that, I created a, uh, a talent development framework with the colleagues in school. I say I created it, I set the brief, and then a, a great team of staff within school have created that, which takes us all the way from pre-ITT all the way through to head teacher level, with a variety of courses and programs. Of course, the MPQs run like a stick of rock through the middle. So MPQ, MLSL, MPQH, et cetera, will go up there alongside other programs that may be there, such as teaching leaders or, or the ITT programs, school direct, et cetera, at each level as it goes through. But then also putting in a series of programs for aspiration. So it may be that danger zone when people have finished their RQT year and that support drops away, in that danger zone of the, the, the next three years, making sure that there's the outstanding program or developing teaching program or some coaching qualifications put in there for those colleagues. So every single person who's deemed to have a solid floor in, in school, I'll come back to that in a second, has got a program or course they're part of in a three weekly cycle uh, uh, leadership or teaching development process. So we, we also have like a pastoral, uh, pastoral middle leaders uh, leadership program. We have a, uh, an aspiring senior leaders program and, and alongside each of those programs, we've bought uh, every member of staff, in fact, they're getting them next week uh, uh, to go alongside that, uh, a book that's appropriate to their level. So uh, Andy Book's uh, uh, Leadership Matters book on uh, coaching, the coaching group having that book along and using that as a, uh, a reading group alongside the work we do on talent development, the, the, uh, the new teachers, the uh, newly qualified and the recently qualified, the book they're having is uh, one of Ross McGill's books. Mark Plan Teach and, and so on. So that we're trying to encourage people to research, to learn, to learn together and develop and we grow. Now that happens in a lot of schools. We, we, we're really quite pleased how we've done that. 
Um, what didn't happen in, in the school, I mean, currently, there, there was no performance management in place for, su for support staff at all. So the same process is in place for support colleagues now, including an appraisal, a performance management in place, but a very similar ladder for their, for support staff for whichever group they're in. So we brought together our sort of our, our lead of our IT technicians, our lead of our site team, our lead, lead of uh, finance, et cetera, together, and a, a leadership development program for them as well, to again, to allow them to grow and, and, and develop uh, as they go forward. But alongside those programs, really important, we have a set of experiences. So anybody new to a leadership post will have a coach. Anybody who uh, the induction program we've beefed up that we use with people and really strengthened uh, that program as it goes forward. We, we've also put in a variety of associate positions or special projects where people do things uh, to, to go forward and, and also work experience and work shadowing. And it's allowing some people who may have described themselves as previously being stuck uh, who have now been liberated and found new ways to move forward. I have two LSAs, uh, Learn Support Assistants, who, uh, who are working part-time two and three days per week, two or three years from the end of their career, top of their game still, wonderful, but feeling they couldn't develop. Well, actually, they're now coaching some of the younger members of staff within the, in the team, and they've just been liberated and freed and, and have got a complete new lease of life. I have another middle leader within the support staff team, who uh, had struggled with relationships within his team. So we've done some bit, bit bespoke work around developing and growing those with, with coaching. Uh, I, I, I also, I'm reclaiming the word support plan as well in terms of what we do. And, and uh, an example, on the first day when I arrived, I, I talked about talent development and said that I'll be, I'll be using support plans in school quite liberally. And I, I said, I'm going to name two people now. And you can see people recoil. And I named... Uh, the two people. I named both my deputies, Caroline and Claire. They're stunning. They do a wonderful job. Uh, and people were looking aghast that I'd said that that's what I was doing. And and uh, I said, yeah, they're, they're support plans aren't just for people who are deemed to be failing, because quite often support plan means get your coat, you're off, I'm getting rid of you. And it's not mm -hmm. that. So both, of those, uh, both of those leaders, I've hooked them in with two wonderful executive head teachers through the Women Ed Network. Uh, who are working as their coaches. I have no idea what they're talking about. They could be talking about me and how they can manage upwards and get the best out of me as they go forward. It, it really is just to help them to become the best possible deputies they can be. And both are on the home run to headship as well. So to allow them to develop and grow in that way, they're both doing their yeah, MPQH. Exactly. Yeah, okay, almost finished. Yeah. They're both doing their MPQH. They're both following those programs and and, and, and doing wonderfully well. Now that's that leading by example there is, is flowing down the school now. So I have a host of staff now who have volunteered and come forward to say, where's my support plan? What can I have to move forward? Uh, so people hooking over left, right and centre. Staff perception questionnaire that we used, two of them so far this year, has gone through the roof in terms of the, uh, the, the value of the new performance management process, but also that around talent development and, and that of equity, working particularly for the BAME and women within school and uh, our LGBT community within school again, which is again coming to the fore. So in terms of creating that equitable talent development and performance management system, a few of the things we've done in the 63 days I've been there, uh, school days since starting in September. The end. I've not, I've not been able to see you all the way through that because my screen froze in the middle with me trying to share so I can see this arm that you can't see. It's just frozen, the screen. So I'm glad you've been able to see. Yeah, let's see and hear and uh, lovely comments coming through both in the live chat as well, Patrick and on on Twitter, particularly that one there mm -hmm. about um, uh, hard work and, and uh, um, yeah. uh, when it means opportunity. I think that's so true. Um, but it, without putting those two things in, then when the opportunity comes, if you haven't put in the hard work in, you're not really sort of jump at those opportunities that come, are you? No, no, absolutely. In fact, if you, if you, even if when I talked about a solid floor, I've got three teachers who are currently their floors aren't. They are a bit wobbly. That's not. That doesn't mean there's a problem. They're not on a scrappy. All we're doing is making sure we can help them to develop yeah. their floor so they become solid. And, and there's no limit to that. As soon as we're ready, mm -hmm. they can hook into one of the programs, and off you go. And, and actually, creating the opportunities and being creative. And the, the one question I've asked all staff when I've met them at the end of the, my one-to-one -one meetings is. And what do you want to be when you grow up? And actually, for some people who've been doing the same job for a while, it's a good conversation. Well, actually, I really feel that it's, I want to change your direction. I want to be able to do this. And it's, it's really allowed us to open up a development dialogue so we're a growing organisation. We're about learning. One of part of our school vision is never stop learning, but that should apply absolutely to the colleagues as we, as we model that. And we should be supermodels of learning.